Hello my friends, welcome to week five of our program. So we're almost halfway and hopefully you've learned a lot so far. Now week five is on movement of the body with the breath, which is also what we call vinyasa. And vinyasa is literally that moving with mindfulness, specifically with the breath. So that's what today is going to be, more of a vinyasa flow. If you're wondering what the difference is, hatha is more of holding poses. So we might hold butterfly pose and sit there for one to two minutes or on average about that. Whereas vinyasa will be moving. So we might be in this twist, we'll inhale to one side, exhale to the other side, whatever it might be, that's just an example. And it's gonna be a lot more movement there. So let me know how you go, if you enjoy it. And this will help you figure out which kind of practice you like too, whether it helps you stay focused, or maybe it's just a bit of mindfulness for you and you prefer the longer holds and so forth. So yes, that is what we're doing today and for this whole week. So set that intention. And not only in your yoga practice, but throughout your day and work, and regular life so think of moving with mindfulness okay <laughs> I hope that all makes sense and let's begin in our cross-legged seated position once you're here let's close off the eyes take a big breath in sit up nice and tall exhale the shoulders back and down take a few longer breath here to slow down from your day and your mind. Notice the body and the muscles. Become aware of how everything's feeling today. Any areas of tightness, discomfort, whatever it is, acknowledge, and then move on. Hopefully we can stretch out some tightnesses if that's the case for you. Let's start by taking our usual nice big twist. So eyes open or close, up to you. Let's inhale a wide high reach. Exhale to your right side first. Landing in that twist. Remember no ego. Find your breath. And checking over the pose to make sure it's all good with your cue. So tall spine, your hands are there just for support, not to carry you in the pose. Breathing into the belly, right down into your diaphragm. Finding your ujjayi breath. So already there's a lot to think about and it will come naturally the more you practice. Remember your ujjayi breath wants to be about five seconds on the inhale. Pause for a second at the top. Exhale for five seconds. And pause at the base. So that is your uh, ratio of our ujjayi breath that I'm starting us on at least. If you can take bigger breath, definitely encourage you to do that. All right, let's take it back to the other side. Inhale to come back, reach up high. Exhale to your left. This feels so good to do, whether it's in the morning or the evening. Love these twists. And you'll notice that throughout the practice and every practice, I will often say, inhale to unwind and exhale to come into the pose. And that's another thing I want you to become aware of because in your own practice, if that is the case, if you do want to do something your own free will, so be it, then it's important that we get the breath right because it helps us not only in the pose, but it helps us stay focused in that present moment once again. So just remembering that we inhale out of poses and exhale into them. Let's take one more breath here, bigger breath, slow it down. Inhale, 
down to unwind. Take that nice big wide reach. Exhale to your right side with the right hand for our lateral reach. And find some space through the side body there. I just find these poses to start off with are so just gorgeous. <laughs> Hopefully you do too. Rounding through the hips. Find your breath. Have a think of what breath we're going to do to come out of the pose. We're going to inhale, come up. Both hands reach high. Exhale into your left side. And breathe through that. I know that every now and then if you want to breathe out through the mouth, totally fine, nothing wrong with that. It's just a bit of etiquette, I would say. So in yoga practice, in a class, everyone's <sighs> kind of gets a little rowdy. So do it whenever you need to, but not regularly. All right, last breath here. Breathe it all in, hold the pose. Exhale it out. Inhale, rise on up, both hands nice and high. Exhale, the hands down through heart center. Take a breath of pause. Wonderful. From here, we're gonna come into a forward fold. So staying where you are, what we're gonna do is have one leg slightly in front of the other. So like so, if you can. If crossing your leg is hard enough, it is to stay there, that's fine. Just make sure that your right leg is slightly in front of your left leg, or like your left leg isn't in front, if that makes sense. I'm sure it does. <laughs> okay, so right leg's in front. Inhale, take a big reach. And exhale, ground the hands straight down in front of you. Keep a long, flat back to start off with, so we're not rounding here. Poke your bum behind you, forward tilt through the hips. Up. All right, forward fold all the way as far as you can go. Now you can keep your arms straight here if that feels comfortable and assisted. Maybe you'd like to tuck your chin down as well. If anyone wants to bend through the elbows, whether you're grounding or hovering, by all means go for that too. Do what you feel guided to do and what you feel safe and comfortable in. Of course, we want to be slightly uncomfortable but we don't want to be in any pain whatsoever. So find your variation. Every day will be different, as I say so many times. And with the right leg in front, you may notice that the right hip gets more of a stretch here. If you don't find that, that's okay. If you feel it in your knees a little bit, you might need to straighten your left leg out or something. See how you go. All right, inhale, walk your hands back towards you. Come up nice and tall, swap legs. So your left leg's gonna be in front now, or whether it's stacked or not stacked. Inhale, take a big reach. Exhale, the hands down, straight in front of you to the ground. And remember, flat back is as flat as you can be here without the bum coming off of the mat and looking down between your arms there. So once you've got that flat back and you've reached as far as comfortable, then feel free to round the back into the pose. The reason we keep a flat back to start off with is so that we can get as much into the pose properly as we can. So from the hips here, from the back and glutes. Breathe through, find that breath. Notice the difference from this side. For me, this side's always a little bit tighter and that's completely normal too. We have a dominant side in our body generally Hence why we have imbalances. And that's why we have yoga to try and balance these imbalances out. This is still our warm up. 
relatively slow and steady. And then we're going to make our way back up onto the hands. Wonderful. Let's meet in tabletop then. So wherever you want to get there. And meet there. So love doing a couple of cat-cow poses to again in our warm-up begin with. So let's do that. Inhale, drop the belly button down, lift the chest and chin. Exhale, push into your hands into the mat, tuck the chin right under, push as far away from the mat as you can. Inhale to drop back down through the belly, lift the chest and chin. Exhale to cat. Inhale to cow. Exhale to cat. Inhale cow. And exhale to cat. Beautiful. Let's untuck our toes, flatten them out. Knees and feet are hip width apart, still here. And we're going to sit back into a child's pose, but we're going to start into a bit more of a vinyasa practice now. So the arms reach out long here, keep the elbows lifted, sink your hips right back towards the heels. Now this is going to be pretty tough. You just go into this push-up to a uh, child's pose uh, as much as you can, okay? So it doesn't have to be a deep push up, just a little one's fine. You'll soon see what I mean. So the forehead drops down to the mat, rest it there for a breath. Notice where the hands are, reach them a little further, spread the fingers out wide. Inhale then, push up into all fours. You're going to do a little push up, so just a little push up, and then exhale straight back like so. So the push up, inhale, come up again. You will notice that your shoulders come way over your wrist, that's what we want. And a little or big tricep push up is what it is, or a chaturanga push up, but it's on our knees, a little variation. Now, if that's like way too hard, you're like, please Leah, I'm not ready for that. <laughs> then come up onto your toes and you'll be able to reach a little bit further in front of you. Same deal, maybe widen the hands if you need to, but try and keep them about shoulder width apart. So we inhale, push up, and then your hands are gonna be a little further in front. Do just a little push up, however far you need to, and exhale to come back. So it's a little bit easier, with the toes tucked. Find what you want to do here. Let's keep flowing with your breath, your pace, by all means, follow mine if you like. Okay, inhale, lift up. Do your little push up as that inhale keeps going. Exhale, push all the way back. Inhale, push up. Exhale, push back. Inhale. Exhale. And you might find your toes naturally widen and narrow. I do, just because I have my body instinctively knows what to do in child's pose with the big toes to touch. And then maybe they widen as you come to the push-up, who knows? Doesn't matter, but all we're doing is finding awareness there. Have a more if you feel up to it. Depends on your energy levels. Beautiful, let's do one more. Excellent. All right, have a rest in child's pose. This time bring your hands, stack one hand on top of the other, elbows out wide, rest there. Notice how your back feels, your heart rate may be a little higher. Take this pause, reflect on everything that's just happened so far. Do you feel okay? Do you feel like that was too much? Maybe you could have gone harder. Lots of little questions to ask yourself. Let's keep moving on. Inhale, lift the chest. Come up back into tabletop. And then we're going to press into downward dog. To get there, just reach your hands a little further in front. Spread the fingers out wide. 
we want our index finger, our pointy finger, to face to the top of the mat, okay? The pinky fingers and the thumbs are all really spread out wide. Tuck the toes, exhale yourself into downward dog, maybe pedaling out the legs here. So that was an extended warm up that we've had going on. Hopefully you are feeling a little warmed up. And I'm gonna add in some sun salutations today. We're in week five and to me, my home yoga practice isn't yoga without some sun salutations, especially to warm up. So I'm gonna teach you that. I'm only gonna show you the beginner variations so that you can really nail those first. All right, inhale, look towards your hands. We're going to take a nice big step forwards or take several big steps, whatever you like. So coming into a forward fold at the top of your mat, letting the hands droop down, the chest and chin are tucking in, and the knees are bent as much as you need right now. So from here, notice where your hands are, whether they're dangling down, maybe they're touching the ground. If they are touching the ground by any chance, you want to start to leave them either side of your feet. So keep that in mind. You might even like to start to plant the palms down. Even if the knees are bent, that's fine. And we're going to practice a couple more halfway lifts. So halfway lifts, we want to inhale, slide the hands along, maybe the feet, the shins, flatten your arms, legs and back out. And then exhale, folding back down, reaching towards the ground or to the ground. Inhale, slide it up as high as you need to go. And exhale, fold. And the more we fold and stretch out the hamstrings, you might find the more straighter your legs can be. And ideally we do wanna keep practicing straight leg forward folds. All right. We're going to come up to stand now. So bend through the knees, brace the core and the glutes, and inhale to rise. Taking a wide, sweeping reach up high at the top. Exhale the hands down through heart center and take a breath of pause there. Wonderful. So from there, Coming into a grounded position with your feet. So really grip your left big toe into the mat and your right knee is gonna come on up in front of you. So find your balance first. Your hands can come out if you need to. If you have to, only if you have to, you might be able to rest a finger or two on something nearby, but try your best not to. So grab both hands now to that knee if you can. If you have to have one hand off one side, just hold it with your right hand find your foundation through the feet i'm going to open that right knee out wide just with the right hand now depending where your left hand is it can come to your hip so hold that there point the toes in that lifted leg squeeze the bum muscles your glutes keep the belly in shoulders down and back you'll find that you're in quite a external rotation with the hip here from here then, bring it back to centre. We're going to cross that right leg over the left knee and squat down into it. So you may need something to hold on to once again, maybe a wall. Try not to. Flex your right foot that's on top and your right hand can come onto that right knee. So find a focal point, something that's not moving in front of you. Breathe through, really feeling the right glute stretching and maybe your left glute that's standing, really working hard to hold you that. One more breath. Let it go. Inhale, come on up, stretch the legs out to the mat. Pedal it out. Good, let's come to the other side. So when you're ready, inhale your left knee up, finding balance through that right foot. Just hold the knee up at the chest for a minute. What we're doing is getting a nice big stretch through the hips. From there then, hold it just in your left hand, 
we. <laughs> and your right hand can come maybe to the hip or by your side. Open that left knee out nice and wide as far as it goes. Keeping it up high, not letting it drop down. So everything is switching on, especially the glutes. Find your balance. Find your breath. Core strength. Determination. And bring it that knee back in. Cross that left leg over the right leg, squatting down into it, bringing your hands down to that left leg as well. So left hand on the knee, right hand on the heel. What that does is help support it there, hold it in place if necessary. The more you squat into the pose and fold forward, the deeper you're gonna feel that stretch. So no ego, just a little bit of uncomfortableness happening. One more breath only. And let's rise on up, undo the legs, ground them back to the mat. Pedal it out if you like. Beautiful, all right. We're gonna heel toe the feet to the width of the mat then. So that your toes, all but your big toes are pointing just off the edge of your mat. Inhale, take a wide reach up high. Exhale, bring the hands down through heart center, squat down into a squat position and bring the hands towards the chest with the elbows onto the knees. Push them onto the inside edge of the knees and then you go as low as comfortable. So halfway here, it's gonna be a little bit more hard work with the legs working out. If you can, come as low as you like with the hips. No ego though, as much as you might wanna get there, there's no pressure. Breathe through this yogi squat, really good for the inner thighs. Stretch for the lower back. Long posture. Do you love this pose? Sometimes you might need to pop a, something under your heels for a little elevation. So if your heels are off the ground, there's nothing wrong with that. Just means we need to work on your Achilles a little bit more. And downward dog's a great pose for that. Okay. One more breath if you can do it. Now, if you're in the low squat, you're likely going to be able to come into a rocking back position. If you're in halfway squat, just come down however you need to to the back. So what that simply means is if you're in this low squat, you can just rock out of the pose and come into a seated pose. Looks easy, takes practice, like many things do. Come into the middle of your mat. <laughs> All right. So once we're in this seated pose, we're going to stretch out our left leg and bring your right leg in and roll the knee out. So my foot on the right foot is in against the inner thigh of that left leg. Flex the toes on that left foot and then bring your left hand onto that left leg. Open your right arm out wide. So we've got a bit of a opposite arm reach here. We're going to inhale, lean towards that left foot, reach it for it if you can. Keep reaching the top right arm over for it as well. So that's our inhale. More vinyasa here now. So moving, let's, um, what are we doing? <laughs> we inhale into the pose. Just hold it for an exhale. And then we're gonna inhale, come out of the pose, ground that right hand, exhale, push the hips up into a little wild thing. So think of grounding through the right knee, squeezing the bum up high into a little back bend. Left arm's now reaching up and over. So again, it's kind of like a two breath through this pose. Inhale, come down, ground the hips. Exhale, fold towards that left leg, let the right arm follow over. Inhale, come up, ground the hand. Exhale, push up into the pose. Slow the breath. Inhale, lower down with control. Exhale, fold into our side, reach. Inhale, unwind. 
exhale, lift. Inhale, lower it back. Exhale, reaching over. One more, inhale and exhale. Inhale and come back, face forwards as we exhale. Wonderful, let's swap legs. I hope you enjoyed that, I love that little flow. So right leg comes out straight, left leg to the inner thigh, sit up nice and tall. Open your left arm out wide, right hand is on that right leg. So let's just take a breath in to prepare. And exhale, leaning forwards, reaching for the shin or the foot. Left arm reaches up and over. Hold there for a breath, just get used to that sensation. You should feel a really big stretch through the back left hip area. Okay, let's flow through. Inhale, unwind, left hand to the mat, right hand reaches up. Exhale, push into the hips, into our back bend, taking a nice big reach overhead. Inhale to lower. Exhale to fold over that right leg. Inhale to come out, ground the hand, push into the knee. Exhale into it, wild thing. Inhale down. Exhale, fold. Inhale out. Exhale, lift. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, good rhythm, exhale, last one each direction, inhale, exhale, last wild thing, inhale back. And face the chest back to the legs. Bring your soles of the feet in towards one another. So we're gonna come into cobbler's pose, which means the legs come further out in front of us than our butterfly pose. So we're gonna do a little bit of core strengthening here. And as always, you just do your best, okay? So from this cobbler's pose, the legs are quite far in front, the soles of the feet touching, posture is nice and tall. Now we're going to do a little bit of a crunch in and out of this cobbler's pose. First variation, bring the arms out in front like what we do for our reach and recline. Inhale, sit up nice and tall. Exhale, reach forward. Again, pass the toes here. Hold that there for a breath. Just getting used to this hip movement right now. If you need to, drop the hands. Okay, inhale, come on up and take a little recliner. This is gonna be a little harder. You'll find that your knees are gonna move around a lot more. That's okay. Inhale, wait, what we're doing? Inhale back and then exhale, reach back forwards. Really dropping the knees wide as you come into this reach. Now, if you want to up the ante, this time inhale, come up, come all the way back. You might even narrow the feet width a little bit. Reach over your head and then exhale. Use a little bit of momentum to come all the way up and reach forwards. So let's do that again. So we're reaching. Inhale, come back as far as you want to, maybe all the way down. Reach over the head. Exhale, rock it up if you can. Reach into our extended cobbler. So let's keep going through that for, say, three more rhythms, which is three more breaths. Last breath. 
And sit up nice and tall. Notice how that feels. All right, let's stretch out the legs. Bring the heels just over the end of the mat. And we've got some lying down postures now. So with the arms, reach them out long. Take a big breath in. And exhale all the way down to the mat. We've already done our reaches. Once you get to the mat, slide the feet in, rest them towards the hips. And rest there for just a moment. Take a little pause from your day. And then from there, what we're going to do is we're going to cross your right leg over the left leg, nice and snugly. And then from here though, rather than hugging the knees into the chest, like what we've done in our shoelace or cow face pose, we're going to rock the knees over to the left side in a pose called twisted roots. So with your arms, bring them out shoulder height, palms face up. Rock both knees over to the left side. If this doesn't feel comfortable straight away, just uncross your legs. So with that right foot, just rest it to the mat. Let the hips and knees follow. You're doing a nice little gentle twist here. Turn your gaze over to that right side. You need a good stretch through the hips. Find your breath. Notice how easy it is to forget about the breath when we're not moving, when we're not having that transition from two poses. So do your best to come back to it, listening and feeling it. As we rest here. Let's unwind, brace the tummy muscles, push into the feet, roll back. Keep the legs crossed there though, and unwind the legs a little bit. So we're sitting like a little bit of a gentleman pose here. <clears throat> so from there, lift the head and shoulders up and hug in your left knee. So your right arm's in between the gap. Your left hand is just holding that shin or behind the thigh if you can. If that's too much, guys, just see if you can hold that right leg in your hands, your left hand with the foot and your right hand gently pushing away that right knee. So that's another good pose you can do. Try and maintain this be a four pose if you can. Holding the pose but not holding the breath. Letting yourself slow down now. You've earned this rest. Notice how the body is feeling and responding right now. Pose. Keep the legs crossed. You're going to release the hands and ground that left foot back. So just how we first started the pose. Widen your arms out again to shoulder width or shoulder height apart. And then roll both knees over to the left side again. What we're going to do is that right foot is going to rest on the ground though. And your knee is going to keep pointing up in the same direction. So Rock it all the way over, hopefully or nearly that right foot will ground. And you'll feel kind of a bit of a stretch through the hip in a different way to what we just were in. So the idea of this one is maybe bring the left hand and gently push that knee away from you. Because if it's hugging right in into a kind of deep twist of some sort, we want to push that knee back and up. So that's our pose here. If you can't feel much sensation, great. You're probably pretty flexible here, but I'm just allowing this for everyone. So breathe through, close the eyes. Notice any sensations running through the legs or the arms. 
Allow yourself to be fully present. Last breath on this side. And when you're ready, we're going to unwind. So pushing into both feet, use your core, come all the way back. We're going to uncross the leg, but we're not done with that right leg yet. We have one more pose to go. So with that right leg that's hugging into our chest now, bring your right hand on the inside of that leg, lift the head and shoulders up, flex that right foot and hold on to either the ankle or shin or the outer edge of the foot if you can. So we want to try and lift that foot as high as we can to get a hamstring stretch. From there, hopefully you can rest your head down as well. If not, just jump up, grab a pillow or something. Really feeling that right hamstring here. So we're pulling that knee down towards us. Your left leg is currently bent. If you want to advance, you might want to stretch out that left leg long. Don't have to, it's just there if you want it. If you find yourself shaking, it is quite an effortful pose, so not to worry, but make sure that there's no, or not too much ego in the pose. This is our half happy baby pose. One leg is in our happy baby, the other leg is either bent or stretched out. One last breath here. Alright, let's release that right foot, ground the feet to the mat, both of them separately and rest there for a moment. Notice how much that right leg is potentially feeling stretched out compared to the left. Let's even that out. So, bring your left leg and cross it over the right. Just centre that right foot and make sure it's pretty close to the hips as well. We don't want it to be too far away from us. Otherwise, it will put a bit too much pressure on the hips there. Open the arms out wide to shoulder height. Brace your core, don't collapse. Control into a twist, moving the knees over to the right side. Use your feet to ground you. Once you've lowered into that twist, look over to the left side. Remember, if this is too much, just uncross the legs and stack them on top of one another. Find your breath and notice how this twisted roots pose feels for you. I feel a little different on this side compared to the other. Always going to get you comparing sides of your body because it helps us understand any imbalances. We're not comparing the good and the bad, we're just trying to find the differences try and balance it out. Let's rest here for a few moments. Let yourself get comfortable. get too cozy let's unwind brace the abs push into the feet rock yourself back to center center yourself there uncross the legs a bit to sit like a gentleman as we were before bring those hands in and reach for that right leg so we're in our threaded figure four pose or also known as a bit of a lion pigeon pose so we're holding on to the right leg wherever it's comfortable. Keep your back rounded evenly. So you might find that you're rocking up to the side. Try not to. Really center yourself, ground through the back. Your left foot stays flexed here. So no relaxing that top left foot. Keep it flexed if you can, unless it's too intense. And 
Settle yourself in here. Notice that left glute, maybe hamstring, getting quite a deep stretch. Breathe away any discomfort. No pain, just discomfort. probably have already realized that we do a lot of glute stretches and that's because our glutes do so much for us from day to day. They help us walk, run, step up stairs, step into things, out of things. Our glutes, among it, the rest of our body and legs more so, carry us through our day. They do a lot of work and so they get tight and aggravated very easily. Okay, we're going to keep the legs crossed. Use your abs, slowly let go of that leg with your hands. Bring your arms back out to that shoulder height, scarecrow position basically. Keep the legs there, roll both knees over to the right side, but just ground that right foot rather and maybe push that knee away with your right hand. Your gaze can be straight up, maybe over to the left. And once again, no pain, just a slight different stretch here in that left hip area. Notice what's going on there. If it's not comfortable, you might like to pop your left foot on top of the right knee. Otherwise, stay where you are if it's okay. Couple more breaths. And there. Bring both arms back out wide. Push into your feet, use your abs, roll back the knees to center. From there, bring that left knee into the chest. Hug it in, right in as far as comfortable. Do any movements you like. So that knee is actually coming to the left side rib cage area rather than straight in front of you. So bring it out to the side a little bit. Lift the head and shoulders up and reach for that foot or ankle if you can. Start to lift that left foot up a little higher and then rest the head back down to the mat. Use that pillow if you need it to. So we're in half happy baby pose, breathing through our left hamstring now. You really feel it through the outer edge of your left side thigh, rather your under half thigh, your hamstrings. Notice how the body is responding to this pose, whether it's good, maybe a little resistant, so forth. If anyone wants to, now's the time to straighten out that right leg. I personally find it a little too intense, so I'm going to keep my right knee bent. You do you here, as long as there's no ego coming in to injure ourselves. Nearly done. This is quite a hard pose to hold for a length of time. Beautiful. Okay, let's release the foot, the hand, ground the feet. Hug the knees back into the chest, both of them. Rock them around. Wonderful. And from there, ground the feet back down. We're going to stretch ourselves out into our Shavasana. So doing so, grabbing what you need, any blankets, eye pillows. Make sure you've got your essential oil nearby. And settle yourself in there for our Shavasana. Allow the shoulder blades to tuck behind you. The legs to widen to about the width of your mat ankles and knees to soften and roll out. 
lower back feels supported, whatever pose you're in. Remember that if this pose feels too much on your back at any time, bend your knees back in, keep the feet wide on the mat and roll the knees in together. And that's a really another restful way to rest in this meditation with minimal effort, but just gives you a little more support there. Stay in the straight leg position if you can, however. Take a big breath in for me. And sigh it out. If you want to do that one or two more times, go for it. Make any last movements now until we settle down into stillness and silence. welcoming that slower pace. Notice where your arms lie, with that by your sides, on your belly, your chest. That's completely fine. Where they are is where they're meant to be. You've intuitively popped them there. Relax your jaw, your eyebrows. Letting go of all effort here now. Enjoying some silence, whether it's in your mind or in the room. If or when thoughts arise, simply acknowledge them and then let them go with your breath.
we go. And get some toys. But those small movements begin moving them like a chain reaction into the wrists and the ankles. Taking some bigger breath if that's what you desire. Walking the heels closer together, bringing the hands to interlace the fingers. Push the palms away from you, over your head, lifting the chest and back high off the mat. Pointing the toes, doing a big overhead stretch, and then bringing the arms back, sliding the feet in. Hugging the knees into the chest. Make any movements you like here. And rolling over onto your fetal position on that right hand side. And making your way up into our seated position. Once you're up in your seated position, let's find our essential oil. For me today, I've got one called Console, also known as a comforting blend. It's very feminine, this one. It's got lavender, uh, patchouli, frankincense, ylang ylang. Actually, I don't think it has lavender. I think I just saw purple and thought lavender. <laughs> Sandalwood, rose, um, and a couple of others. So very nice, um, earthy yet feminine way. All right. Let's rub those hands together if you've got your oil. I hope you do. Really do invest in one or a couple if you haven't yet. I promise you, you will just love them. And you can use them outside of your yoga practice too. Okay, let's take our three big breaths. When you're ready, bring the hands to the face. Big breath in. Side out. Make sure that you soften your shoulders down with every exhale. Let's go again. Big breath in. Exhale it out. One more breath. See if you can take the biggest breath of your day. your prayer pose, bring the thumbs to meet at your third eye. With my thumbs at my third eye, my thoughts are pure and clear. Bring my thumbs to my lips, my speech is pure and clear. With my thumbs to my chest, my heart is pure and clear. Let's take a moment of gratitude while our hands are in prayer pose at our heart. Stating what you're grateful for silently or aloud. you feel wonderful and have enjoyed this practice of movement of the body with the breath. I look forward to seeing you for the bonus video to come. Thank you so much. Namaste.
for now guys. I will see you, see you soon for the bonus class.